Previously, we've seen how you can use code snippets in Visual Studio Code, but turns out you can probably use them in that other visual editor. That's right, you can use snippets in Visual Fox Pro. Let's mash on that. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, uh, sorry to disappoint everyone, we're not going to be looking at Visual Fox Pro. Uh, we are going to be looking at snippets, I guess, in Visual Studio, full Visual Studio. Yes. Tell me all about that. Still a bit of a dinosaur compared to uh, VS Code, but there's a lot of us who do spend a lot of our time in the full-blown version of Visual Studio, and code snippets are something that I always wait way too long on a project to get going with, and uh, then I'm always I, I, like I, I'm always regretting that I waited as long. They save a lot of code. Um, they save a lot of uh, finger strokes. Now we already know what they are. For example, if I just type class. It's going to give me a class that I can do um, get contacts uh, by last name. And so let's just say I'm doing a feature here that I want to do. Um, I, my the, the reason why it came up for me was I was, I've been doing a lot of work in Mediator and there's kind of a pattern. And so it is a um, it's a request. Actually, it's my request. Let me just do the right code here. And then I have to import Mediator. And the the typical thing that you're going to do is you, we're going to you know do something that is there's the request itself it's the class um, and then there's the resulting thing that comes back and when we make a request we make it of the type of the result and then we have to do the implementation of the handler so we do a handler which is an I request handler of the type of the class comma the type of the result so we do all of this um, work and. For the purpose of generating a longer video, because this one's going to be pretty short, I'm just going to type out all that code. And I'll just show you what we normally go through. So we do class, and then I might do result. And then this is just going to be a POCO class. And I would have that there. And then I'm going to do another class in here where I do public class um, handler. And I'm going to make that an I request of type that comma result. And I'm going to do uh, generate the or implement the interface if it'll let me do that. Oh, just need some curly braces there first, I think, to close your class. Oh, okay. Usually I thought that it would do that for me automatically, but anyways, just go ahead, implement. Oh, it is not. Oh, it's I request. Haha. <laughs> I will go back and erase those curly braces because I know that this works. Handler, press your handler. And now, no. Oh, gosh. I'm just making it worse from better to worse. Oh, I see what happened. I accidentally created a class. Okay, I request handler. Now, implement interface. There we go. That's what I was trying to show. And what else am I going to do? I'm typically going to be um, uh, making this async. And then I'm going to go in here. I'm going to create another constructor here. So I'm using another code snippet. And then I'm going to implement my, or I'm going to import my um, uh, data context. So I'll do that and I'll say context equals context. And then I have to create my read only field. So we do this. And if you're in a project, um, uh, uh, I made some kind of mistake here, but we'll, I'm not too worried about it. Um, if, if you, if you're on a project where you've got a lot of features that you're implementing, you're writing the same 35 lines of code over and over and over again. But Simon, but Dave, what if I told you there was a better way? Is there a better way, James? I've been typing all day and my fingers are worn down. Simon, I'm so glad you asked. Um, what if I could just type mediator and generate everything here? And now I just type get contacts. That's amazing, James. My last name, but wait, there's more. And as soon as I hit enter, it fills everything in and my, my, it's all ready to go. It imports my namespaces for me. It sets up all of the code and and then that's pretty much it. So um, it just makes, yeah, I know. Um, I, I'm being, we're being a little bit facetious here, a little dramatic, but this is something that will save a lot of time. And I find too that it reduces a little bit of friction when you get going on the on the contract for the feature. So I, I like this because it just is pretty pretty quick and slick. So. 
what does a snippet look like there this is i'll start with this this is the piece that we're probably going to recognize the most and it's just effectively it's the it is the actual code that's going to be replaced and you'll notice here that i've got this feature name between dollar signs and that's the piece that gets repeated throughout now i, I took a little in the interest of making things simple here I, I took a little bit of a a cheater way and I, I put a project data context in here and that's the name of my data context um, but honestly for how easy these are you could create these for a project um, or you could make your code snippet a little bit more complex and add another parameter in there so you can just tab through the fields and and make the change so um, this is just a substitution technique you type the thing and hit enter and all of them are replaced throughout the template so that's how that that piece of um, of code was generated. So there's other things that you can do. For example, you can actually, if you're inside of a class, and this is how the CTOR works, the constructor snippet, you can, there's functions that you can call to get things like the class name. Um, you can also do substitutions, um, uh, various substitutions. There's, there's a whole list of them. We'll link to that in the show notes. Um, in my case, I just said, what is the feature name? So I have a literal declaration in here. So there's a couple of different sections. I'm inside the snippet um, section. It's an XML document saved as a dot snippet. So we have our normal kind of um, XML um, uh, opening to like the root tag there. And I've got the code snippets with my namespace in it. Then there's two ones that we want to worry about. There's the header and the snippet. So in the header, I define my shortcut and I give it a name. I just call this the mediator triad. And um, we can specify any imports that we want to add. In this case, mediator needs to be in there in order for us to um, use that namespace. And what else was there? Um, right, basically this literal based off the feature name goes into the replacement sets inside of this C data replacement area. And that's pretty much it. You can, there's also one other thing that we could do. Uh, for example, if I always know that I'm going to put um, my cursor in right here, instead of the, like maybe right after that um, throw new implement section, I could just put end right here. And that's where my cursor is gonna end up. Um, I'd have to unload it and reload it to show you, but basically I just save it. And then that's what, that's where that would, that would be. In order to input, Port the code snippet. We just use the um, code snippets manager. It's located under tools. And then I simply just click on add and um, I can pull that in. So um, uh, yeah, that's those are the basics of it. Um, and that's how I uh, that's how I ended up doing a lot less code and keystrokes with a snippet. Um, one thing to note, I actually like to start over in the code here. Um, I, sorry, Dave, it sounded like you might have, might have had a question. We'll get the snippet. No, I was, I was wondering if there was a way to share them just like for this project or for this, uh, repository or something, but I don't know if that's an option with, uh, with Visual you know, Studio. you can set up, um, the code snippets manager has a location. And so the only thing that I was thinking of that you could do would be to include a code snippets folder in the root of the um, of your project. And then you check that into code and you would have to import them manually, but at least it would give you um, a way to share them. Um, if I click add, it goes from there. If I click import, yeah, it's just doing um, a code snippets directory that it just knows already. So um, there, there are some install, like you can do like a uh, Visual Studio extensions bit and actually right. install the snippets. So there's another way that you could possibly do it. So you'd maybe just have a little V6 or something for your, um, that you just run from time to time on your project. But I think probably if you just, you know, you, you put the snippets in the root of your um, folder and check it in. It would, it would, that's probably the best that you could do. It would be nice though. That's a really good idea, um, Dave, um, to be able to have that available throughout the project, just simply by virtue of having it in the root of your project or something like a, a dot snippets directory or something that doesn't show up in the solution explorer. Um, so yeah, as I said, I'll usually start with this. I'll actually start with the code that I want to do. So, so maybe it's just like, you know, using that, um, constructor as an example 
like a constructor with a data context is something that you're going to do in a lot of your um, a lot of your controllers. So you might replace, you might create like a, a C tour um, C tour C, and that'll just include the data context that you've that you've got for your for your project, and um, that would automatically generate it for you. So if you're working on um, you know whatever. Um, uh, like a, in a, contr a controller or something like that, and you wanted to insert the constructor into the class and to have um, the uh, data context already in there, that would be a really easy snippet to set up. There we go. Those are snippets in a nutshell. And there are more elegant ways to do things like this. Like you can set up item templates and you can set up a, a measure of automation for getting it in as we were talking about. But for the most part, this is pretty easy. Save a file to disk, add the snippet through the code snippet manager and you're good to go. Yeah, in a lot of ways, I like this a little better than doing item templates just because item templates typically require you to go through like some dialogues and yes. user interface to get there. Or is this right. as you stay in the code? And... Yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing that I, I would have liked to have been able to do, and this is what I was trying to get at before, was, um, you know, like when I create a new feature, I'm saying add um, class, and it might be um, uh, save contact or update contact info. And that's going to generate the class for me. And I have to like erase this text. So, but the nice thing is, is now I can just copy the class name, select this and type mediator and then hit paste. And as soon as I hit enter, it's done. So it's, it is really fast to, um, to, you know, to create new, like I've got another feature ready to go here, you know, give or take a not implemented exception. Only thing James is there are only four characters between the D and the R with mediator. If you're using the same pattern as K8S. Oh, you're saying you don't like this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, but this I felt like this is very pronounceable, Dave. Like this yeah. is mediator. I guess so. I don't I don't mind it because I have a template called um, D8 that makes a date. <laughs> a public what? property of state. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a code rush template. Very cool. And there we have it. Awesome. Well, I'm excited. So everybody should go forth and snip it. Um. <laughs> as long as we're ending uh. strong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really feel like that, that concluded the video nicely. So remember you know to like, comment, and share. And uh, if you have lots of really good comments, uh, feel free to write yourselves a snippet that puts it on for one of our videos. We'll see everybody on next week's episode. Bye. Bye.